Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to Market to Amazon EMR uh, video series. Today our topic is architecture approaches. My name is Tanzir Musabir, I'm a specialist SA with AWS. So this particular video is mainly geared towards analytics leaders who are actually managing a large analytics infrastructure. It's also for infrastructure managers who are actually managing infrastructure and also Hadoop administrator who are actually managing or are uh, trying to migrate Hadoop to cloud. So why you actually need to migrate? Definitely there is a cost uh, benefit that you can get on the cloud as well as performance. So we have a lot of customers who successfully migrated to Amazon EMR, but if you take a look at a couple of examples, for example, FINRA, FINRA actually process 135 billion of events every day to, as to look at the stock market, uh, try, to try to find out the manipulations or like insider trading. And they actually migrated to Apache H based on Amazon EMR, and they also use Amazon S3 for their data lake. And by doing that, they were able to reduce cost by 60%, and which is actually equivalent to close to $20 million. Similarly, Vanguard, they actually decreased their cost by $600,000 in less than five minutes, and they spin up 250 uh, clusters for curating their data. So we have a couple of more customer use cases uh, that actually who actually successfully migrated to Amazon EMR and they saw the benefits of moving to Amazon EMR. So there are three approaches if we categorize them for migrating workloads to Amazon EMR. The first one is re-architecting and that is the most recommended approach when you're actually migrating Amazon EMR to uh, migrating on-premise Hadoop to Amazon EMR. And this is ideal for maximizing the benefits of moving to the cloud. The second approach is uh, lift and shift. So you actually um, migrate or enter workload directly to Amazon EMR. And it's ideal when you have a time in, is critical and you, you actually just migrate. The third approach is hybrid architecture. That means you are in time crash, but at the same time, you also want to re-architect. So in that case, you actually lift and shift your existing applications, and you also re-architect the architecture for new applications. So any new applications that are coming you actually re-architect, but you actually lift and shift your existing applications. So what are some benefits like when you actually migrate uh, or follow the re-architecting approach? So as we know, Amazon S3 is a highly available storage system, and the main benefit of re-architecting is you actually leverage the scaling of storage and computes independently. That means you can scale storage or you can scale compute independently. You don't have to tie them together. Another thing is increased productivity and lower cost by using the latest features and software because every time we release a new Amazon uh, EMR versions, it actually comes with latest features and also latest software. So you, by using the latest one, you can increase the productivity significantly. Then EMR can be run in two different ways. One is persistent and other one is transient. When you actually re-architect, you actually have the options to uh, uh, like a treat your compute instance as a, like a transient resource, that means you can bring up the cluster, run your job, and re uh, time it your cluster. The fourth, fourth benefit is like a ability to prototype and experiment quickly. That means you can actually prototype your uh, new use case and experience quickly because you actually re-architected your entire platform to target uh, different use cases. There are several best practices you can apply or use. Uh, we have a lot of reference architecture. Look for those reference ar ar architecture to see how other customers actually migrated their Hadoop workload from on-premise to EMR. The second approach that we discussed, which is lift and shift. So in a lift and shift, uh, you actually bring your entire workload directly to Amazon EMR. That means you don't need to make a lot of changes. You can just bring your workload. And it, in that way, it's uh, actually you do a less amount of like a code changes. It's less risky because you actually uh, not changing a lot of codes or configurations, and you easily bring it up to the in Amazon EMR. In that case, you actually reduce your time to migrations. But yes, there are some best practices when you do that. Some uh, some of them are like a, definitely consider using Amazon S3 for your storage because when you actually use on-premise, you typically use SDFS. But when you actually move to Amazon S3 uh, as for your storage, it actually gives you a better cost and availability. Again, if, even if you do lift and ship application versions and different release actually comes with different feature sets. So definitely check for application versions, their configuration, because it may not be same. Similarly, if you're running Apache Spark on uh, Amazon EMR or Hive or any other applications, verify that your configurations remain same or 
it, it's not same when actually moving to uh, EMR because Amazon EMR release comes with different versions and different version may have different uh, configurations. So definitely look for those configuration and compare what you need to change. So if you want to know more about my, like a migration approaches, please uh, look out Amazon EMR migration gu guide and we have a section uh, that actually discuss about migration approach. We also provide a free to on-site two-day workshop where we actually discuss more about different migration strategies with the hands-on lab. And you can also go to aws.amazon.com slash EMR slash EMR migrations if to know more about this. Again, my name is Tanzir Musavir. Thanks for watching.